This is a Crystal Clear Speaks presentation. Human Empowerment Radio and Media for the 21st Century and Beyond. Good evening all around the world. Welcome to Crystal Clear Speaks Radio, where metaphysics, spirituality, and common sense intersect to create the practical application of divinely inspired information in your life. I'm your host, Joe Romolo, broadcasting live from St. Louis, Missouri. For the next 60 minutes, I invite you to sit back, relax, and enjoy the ride. I certainly hope that everyone is doing well this evening. Just know that everything is in perfect order whether it appears to be or not. I want to thank you all for being here tonight live and also say thank you to those of you who are listening to the archive. I know that you have many educational and entertainment choices, and I am grateful that you have chosen to spend some of your time with us right here on Crystal Clear Speaks in this moment of now, whenever that may be. If you'd like to be notified each week of upcoming shows and other events, please go to www.healingtheuniverse.com and register there. That's www.healingtheuniverse.com. You can also find me on Facebook, so drop by, say hi, and send a friend request. Now, for those of you who may be new to this show, Crystal Clear Speaks is a celebration of the divine human, a celebration of the divinity that is each one of us. Now, what are we pretending not to know? What have we humans hidden from ourselves to allow us to effectively play this game called the Planet Earth Project? It is our divinity. We have hidden our divinity. And what if we are all ascended masters in human form, and it is we who are teaching those on the other side of the veil? My truth says that in actuality, we are both teacher and student, and so are they. This is not to diminish those on the other side. It is to recognize and celebrate all of us who have so courageously chosen to incarnate time and time again, to have the human experience. Is there anyone who can unequivocally say and prove that we are not ascended masters in human form? It would indeed take a master to choose this experience over and over for the experience and for the benefit of human, spiritual, galactic, and universal expansion and evolution. I celebrate you and me, and if you so choose, I ask that you celebrate yourselves. This show is also about the integration of spirit and human. This is the information that came to me in January of 2004, and that has become the foundation of the work that I do. In addition, it is about the practical application of divinely inspired information in your life. I have a wonderful show in store for you this evening with my very special guest, author, facilitator, and speaker, Monica Murani. But first, I just want to remind you that everything that I say here tonight is my truth. It does not have to be your truth. There are many flavors of truth, and what I speak is only one of them. It is possible that my truth will evolve during this illusion that we call time as I remember more and more. My truth is yours for the taking. I offer it to you for your discernment. Take all of it. Take some of it. Take none of it. It is your choice. It is always your choice. And as always, your questions, comments, and participation are welcome. So light up the switchboard by calling into 818-431-8503. That number again is 818-431-8503. 
So now let's get this show on the road. My special guest tonight has always had a deep affinity and connection with Gaia, Mother Earth. This led her to university where she obtained a Bachelor of Applied Science degree with honors at Southern Cross University in New South Wales, Australia. She has worked in various national parks within Australia and New Zealand for over 15 years. Her ideal heaven was to be communing with nature in remote landscapes of, breath, uh, of, of breath, uh, breathtaking beauty. Following a spiritual awakening, she began to explore the deeper mysteries of Gaia and the universe. This new calling led her to move to New Zealand, and while there, she began uh, her training as an accredited electromagnetic field balancing uh, technique practitioner. After moving back to Australia, she began to travel with the Cryon team as synchronicity allowed. One of her passions is photography, hence many of the photographs of the cryon seminars have been taken by her. She has carefully researched the cryon material and she brings personal experiences and insights as she weaves together the cryon teachings and wisdom. Her first book, The Gaia Effect, provides greater understandings about earth energies and how these interface with humanity. Her second and current book is called The Human Akash. In addition, she has posed over 30 new questions that have been answered by Cryon. It is my pleasure this evening to welcome author Monica Murani to Crystal Clear Speaks. Monica, welcome to the show. Are you with us? Hi, Joe. I am definitely with you, and it is good to be alive. Absolutely. <laughs> yes, it is. You know, I want to thank you, Monica, uh, so much for taking time out from your busy schedule to be here with us. I know you spend a lot of time traveling with Lee, Lee Carroll and Cryon, and I do appreciate you joining us live from your home in Chile for the next hour or so on Crystal Clear Speaks. And as we were talking uh, earlier, uh, you said that you just got out of the hospital. And so I'm yeah, especially grateful that you're... <laughs> Boy, I'll yes. tell you what, and that was a... And that was a quick turnaround because I think I spoke to you Tuesday morning. Yeah. And, uh, wow, that, that was a quick yeah, turnaround. Yeah, it, it's it truly is uh, amazing when people say your life can change on the turn of a dime because um, I flew from Colombia to Santiago in Chile, landed at midnight, had quite a painful night of, of stomach cramps and the next day it didn't disappear and so... On 11th of the 11th, I was admitted into hospital for appendicitis, and I've had my operation, and I was released from hospital today, so it really is my pleasure, absolute pleasure, to be here chatting with you now. And I was hoping to uh, be on my computer, using using Skype on my computer, but my computer has actually died, so <laughs> this is just such interesting time for people right now, so I want to tell anyone who's listening out there, if you've got challenges in your life, uh, we really are being tested. And it's it's not about what did I do wrong to get appendicitis, what did I do wrong to have my computer die on me, and I've, I've still got the third novel, third book that I'm working on in there. So it's a matter of how do you then deal with these challenges that come with us. And right now I have such calm peace around me because... Spirit, our higher self, our divinity, creative source, whatever you want to call it, loves us so much that it doesn't, it, it never gives us things that we can't handle. And so if you can just feel com comforted that uh, you are being supported by such an invisible team that is constantly surrounding you, it means that no matter what happens, you're going to get through it. So what well, a great way to start the show, hey? <laughs> Absolutely. And and the other thing that I want to add to that, I'd like to add to that, Monica, you know, if I may, and that is that a lot of times people like like the people that are listening to the show both live and who will listen to the archives and the people's who the people who uh who attend uh you know the conferences and you know like uh, attend Lee uh, Lee Carroll and, and cry on events and you know other other similar kinds of events, you know, when they see Lee up on stage or they see you up on stage or, or other people like, you know, Peggy Phoenix Dubro and, uh, you know, and any of the people, uh, Dr. Todd of and, you know, they, when they see these people up on stage, uh, are they listen to 
uh, radio shows like this, you know, anybody who happens to be doing this kind of work or similar work, a lot of times people think that uh, that we are all immune from the regular challenges of life as, as opposed to us by, you know, God, the universe, the all that is. And, you know, for some reason or other that, you know, we don't have to go through the same things that, that they do. And, you know, I, I, I'll, I'll be the first one to say that in many instances um, our challenges are, are the same, if not uh, heavier, than other people out there uh, simply because we're here talking about this and, and, and facilitating. So I don't know if you find that to be true, but that, that certainly Absolutely. is my truth. Absolutely. Absolutely. And it's about understanding that we have the tools and techniques available to us to help help guide us and navigate us through life. And it's always done with free choice. So there's an entire entourage of spiritual divine help available to us, but it can only become engaged when we have free choice and ask for the help. So synchronicity and co-creation is happening around us all the time, but are we, are we paying attention to it? And so when something really bad happens, it's time to pay attention to it. And is, is there another meaning here? Is there a metaphor here? Is there something else that I'm not getting? And often it leads us to a path that we never would have chosen, but it's opened up because something has happened. We know that's that that's true, and you know I, I really want to go in a particular direction to start with uh, this this evening. And you know I um, I was fortunate enough to meet Lee Carroll, who was the original channeler of Cryon. I think it was nine or ten years ago. Um, I met him in San Diego, um, which is the area where where he lives. And then a couple of weeks later, he came here to St. Louis to. Um, uh, to present uh, one of his up close and, and personal events, and so I, I had the opportunity, uh, you know, to spend a little time with Lee, and uh, I had, you know, I was familiar with the cryon work at the time, and you know, with the different uh, the different cryon books that that Lee had written, and what I'd like to know is, uh, how did you come up with the idea to write these subject driven books rather than Rather than the the channeled kind of books that that Lee would usually Lee and Cryon would would write, why did, how did you come up with that idea uh, to do that? And then how did you get permission from Lee to uh, to write the books? Well, I actually never planned writing the book. I was more interested in finding a book that was already written, and the, and what I was looking for was a book that had the information about the energy grids of the Earth as channeled and given by Cryon. I spent about two years uh, searching anything I could that connected the words Gaia, energy grids, the planet, and was very disappointed that I, I could not find what I wanted. And so it was in 2012 when I decided to move to Chile for, for some time, and I was here in Santiago, Chile, where I, I woke up with this intuitive voice already writing the first part of the chapter for the Gaia book and in that moment I said to Spirit okay I will do it I will write the book and I didn't really know what that meant except that I felt passionately driven for other people to know about this amazing benevolent system that our planet Earth Gaia has that supports humanity and really this is a 180 degree turnaround for me because working as a national park ranger I learned all about the environment the ecosystem and there were so many environmental problems and I used to have this belief system that humans are the root of all evil we've stuffed up the oceans we've stuffed up the planet there's so many extinct species because of the human activity and I was really kind of down on humanity and population exploding so imagine my surprise 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 i find out that the the re, the humans are the reason for the season and that is why gaia is here and 
is the way that she is so that she can support us as humans to see if we can find the divinity within. Now, I mean, just discovering that alone kind of blows your mind. So I wanted to try and convey that into the Gaia book so that uh, other, there's so many scientists and researchers out there, but there's that missing link, and the missing link is understanding the divinity within ourselves and how that is connected to the planet Earth. And this is where, where we're going as a uh, human consciousness evolves and comes higher. We get more in touch with ourselves, which completely changes our attitude towards the earth. We see it as a living, breathing extension of ourselves. And so I think all of those environmental problems, they will, they will there'll be solutions that come up that we never thought of because we didn't have that consciousness to think about it. And so when I had this idea, I talked to Lee Carroll about it and uh, wanted to know if he would be comfortable in me writing about the energy grids of the earth. And he immediately said, well, you think you're just going to keep it to the energy grids? You need to talk about all the other things Crian has talked about for Gaia and make it a complete book. So I hadn't thought about that until Lee told me. So that's how it was kind of an organic process between what I originally wanted and uh, Lee Carroll, obviously, he's just so brilliant and he's written so many books that he actually helped me shape and form what I should put into the book. So yeah, it was like a joint joint collaboration and, and there you go. <laughs> well, you know, I, I think I think that's really I think that's really incredible because um you know, I know that when I started reading the Cryon books, uh <laughs> it was really kind of funny because when I, when I first heard about Lee and Cryon, it was it was sometime after I had uh, discovered uh, Steve Rother and his work with with the group, and uh, I think well, at that point, yeah, I had I had actually met Steve and we had we had become friends at that point, and um, and then I you know and he he mentioned something about Lee Carroll and and so I remember I was going on a trip I was I was going on a trip up to northern Minnesota. It's a trip that I do most years in the in the early fall, and um, I wanted to bring some things with me to read, and so I, I tried to find the Cryon books, and I think I found books two and three, but I couldn't find book one. So I just went ahead and I got them and brought them with me, and I started to read book two, and I was just totally lost. I was totally lost in book two because it, book two uh, was built upon book one. But I was reading it anyway, and I, I ended up reading one, two, and three, but not in that order. And I thought, God, I wish somebody could just write something to explain this stuff, because you know, as as, as you know, books one, two, and three were, uh, to me, were quite uh, quite technical. And uh, in this day and age, I, I'm just really thankful and grateful that you undertook this project to uh, interpret. The, uh, the the cryon work because there's some really great work that uh, that Lee has done with uh, with cryon and all the books and it's really great to I, I think this is a great way to uh, to bring this work into the mainstream um, but uh, I mean uh, that's that that that's just me so um, what is happening what is this Gaia effect I mean our consciousness is changing human consciousness is is, is is changing. You mentioned a few minutes ago about the divinity that is each one of us. What what is this? What is this divinity that you're talking about? Is this is this some woo woo thing or is this is this a real thing? <laughs> well, I guess that's up to the to the listeners to have their own discernment. But the divinity within it's it's that peace of God that is with you, and there's. It's really difficult to explain it because we're trying to convey something that's a multidimensional um, and emotions don't even cover it properly. But when you have a deep meditation or such peace and calm, that is when you touch your core and your core is the peace of God that is always there. So we come and go, we incarnate over and over again into these human bodies but it's you have your core self your soul that is forever and that in itself to explain to someone there's no beginning no end we don't really have that concept in our linear structure so the the core and the divinity that is within us 
it, it opens up when we give free choice to and through intent to connect with it. So a very difficult concept, but I, I think people either feel the connection and there's, there's so many people that have been awakened souls before who are probably on vacation this time. <laughs> I, I know <laughs> have friends who, who, when I touch on spiritual stuff, they, they, the, the door shuts down, and I know that simply they're either on vacation or they're not ready to hear it, and that's okay as well. Right. Well, you know, I, I use the term divine human all the time, and uh, you know, and there are some people who just uh, they just it's they don't comprehend what that, what that means. And, you know, mm. I'm talking about the fact that, you know, I, my, my truth says that we are each a piece of each, a piece of God. And, mm-hmm. uh, and, and so, and, and as such that we, we are divine, we, you know, and, and this is really all about us discovering um, our divinity. And, you know, sometimes I say that, you know, that we are, we are each not only a piece of God, if we're a piece of God, then we're, we are the whole of God. And there are some people who, take great offense to that, that it's, you know, almost, sac- well, not almost, but it, that it's sacrilege, uh, you know, to say that. But, you know, I, I believe that we are each a, a piece of the divine and uh, that we are here ex- expressing, you know, we're the human expression of, of the divine. So, and, and that fits right in with the, I, I think that fits right in with the cryon teachings. Absolutely it does. And there's, uh, I mean, this is really the we're, we're talking about the divine human and the soul, and this is really the subject of my next coming book. It's a trilogy that I'm that I have set out to compile in this subject-driven way. So the first book is the Gaia effect and everything about the connection with Gaia and humans, and the second book I have is on the human Akash which talks about our Akashic records, our past lives, our history, and our future potential lives to come. And then the third book in the trilogy, which I guess I'm halfway through, three quarters of the way through writing, is all about the human soul. And this is the material, it's the very latest new material that Lee has been presenting all over the world in this year. He has been presenting the nine attributes of the human soul it's absolutely fascinating even when we start pulling apart the nine attributes it's much like the layers the 12 layers of dna that lee Mm -hmm. described in in his book where you it's like a machine where you take the parts uh, take the pieces apart so you can examine them but the whole lot works together it's like this with the nine attributes of the soul there's there's three sets of three and interestingly enough one set of three is related to Gaia, the Gaia soul group. Then we have another set of three which is related to our human uh, human group, which is related to your Akash, your innate and your you know, your intuition. And then the third group is related to the core soul group, which we're talking about your soul split, we're talking about your guides and the, you know, your higher self. So very fascinating information and and it's only being revealed just in these last couple of uh, months that Lee has been travelling around. So it's certainly going to, I guess if people have these boxes of how it's meant to go, it might, you know, they might not like that. But this is what I love about the crying information and how it brings to the fore things that to me make spiritual logic and common sense. Well, I, tonight I want to get to as much of this as we can possibly get, uh, you know, and I know that uh, uh, we're, we're definitely not going to cover all of this material in, in 60 minutes, but I really want to get to as much of this as we possibly can. But, you know, a few minutes ago you mentioned something about multidimensionality. What does Cryon, mm-hmm. what is, what is Cryon have to say about multi-dimensional living are, are we already living multi-dimensionally without knowing it and, and do we do it consciously or can we do it is, consciously well i think there is various layers of how that works and if we look at children that have autism they don't do very well in a linear structure so they um 
when I say multidimensional, I'm talking about an energy that is not related to our linear synaptic brain. And our linear synaptic brain has memory and thoughts and experiences. I touched the stove, it was hot, don't do that again. And it's very, very specific and logical and, and that's the left brain process. But when you step into the multidimensional energies, these are conceptual images and feelings and emotions that get pushed to you. So there's people I know who are listening that are aware of past lives they may have had. So that's connecting in with the multidimensional energy that is within us and, and we carry it with us. So some people can connect to it and they have these for the example, in the Akash, if you've had a past life where you go to a... Let's just take the Pyramids of Egypt for an example. And you sure, walk there sure. and, you, and you, get, you get a feeling that, oh my gosh, I was here before and I remember that piece of artwork and I remember that. But you don't have the synaptic brain memory of my name was this, the date of birth was this, these are my occupations, these are my friends. It's, it doesn't come to you in that way because the multidimensional energy presents itself through a, a different medium. So uh, it's intuition and your intuition comes in and communicates to you. It's what people call the sixth sense. So we all have an innate ability to connect with our intuition. How much of it do we use? And how multidimensional are those that use it a lot so what's your intuition telling you and it can be really small things it can be just going into the supermarket and you walk past and your intuition says oh you need to get some cheese but your logical brain says oh no I have cheese in the refrigerator at home so you ignore your intuition you go home you open up your cheese to find it's all moldy and has is, is no longer edible so these are really simple, basic things of how your intuition connects with you, but it's there all the time. And so uh, other people, easier words to describe it is a, is a gut feeling. You know, it's, it's you know you, if you go somewhere and something bad happens and you say, I knew I shouldn't have gone there or I knew I shouldn't have done that, well, that was your intuition talking to you. And we just have to get better at uh, listening. So... Sometimes we get too much into the, into the minutia. How can I how can I make my uh, desires known in, in a more grandiose way? But really, our desires, our wants, our needs, everything we would want to co-create is already known by our innate, our higher self. And it's just a matter of listening and improving that communication through our intuition. Does that help explain multidimensionality? It's quite a broad topic. <laughs> well, it is, and I'm gonna, I, I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna make the topic a little more, a little more broad at this point by my next question. Okay, so, so we talked about past lives. We're, we're in the present right now. Can we tap into future lives? Yes, absolutely. This is where, excuse me, Crane has said that within the Akash are all your um, potential lives to come. And just recently in some of the channels given in Colombia, he gave a parable of woe. And he went through the numbers of reincarnation. And in an older energy, we would have to experience life, transition over, come back in, and begin again. Now we've passed the marker of 2012 and we're in a whole new energy and we've had got a higher consciousness on the planet than we ever have had before. And so what that means is we no longer have to transition to create our next life, our future life to come. It's not talking about you transitioning and, and the next life. You can pull upon that energy now and you essentially, it's talking about ascension while you're still on planet Earth. And there's a lot of people out there who, are, who are, have already done this people that have dropped their karma. What were the buttons that used to drive you to be angry? What were the buttons that would trigger you to have a reaction so that you're, in, you're constantly engaged 
in that older energy dynamic. So when you drop your karma and move away from that, you actually already have pulled in the your future life to come. So I, it's just fascinating, and I think we're living in some really exciting times. A lot of us have been waiting for this energy, and uh, just don't look at the news. <laughs> That's my advice. Yeah. Well, don't, don't well, I think it's fast. The news I think it's fascinating. It's feeding us. I think it's fascinating as well, and I just want to put this out there to the listeners if if there's something that they really want to want want to try, and that is that in meditation and especially a working meditation where uh you know uh where uh, perhaps uh, the the first thing you're going to do is you're going to do some cleansing clearing healing rejuvenation to really uh uh get yourself prepared to create to really go into uh, to go into the uh, uh, to the imagination to to create what it what it is that you say you want to have at the beginning of that meditation it's really kind of cool to set that energy by calling in all of you not just the you in this consciousness but all of you wherever you happen to be throughout time and space and and the universe call in all of you from all the dimensions that are out there, whatever your belief system is about how many dimensions there are, about past lives, uh, parallel lives, future lives, all of your energy and have, have all of your energy focus on right here, right now, this consciousness. And then do your meditation. And then have all of you go into your imagination and and create and just see how powerful that feels to you i can tell you that it's just really really incredible and and coming up with the idea like that you know part of that is is you know a number of years of of you know uh studying you know the cryon work uh you know pepper lewis's work with gaia uh, mm-hmm. uh steve rother's work with the group uh you know my my own work and just coming up with this I will tell you, and I'm telling the listeners to just really give this a shot, give this a try, because because you'll find that this is just extremely, extremely powerful. And it has to do with multidimensional living, because we are existing in many different places at once. That's how powerful we are. And that's why my truth uh, says that, that we, are, we are pieces of God. We are we're pieces of the divinity. And uh, I just I just wanted to mention that I just wanted to put that out there. Uh, if it works if it works for for the folks, that's great. If it doesn't, don't worry about it. That's just my truth. It just it just happens to uh, it just happens to work. So I you know, it. Monica. Yeah, yeah. You know, uh, and I'll tell you, we're just a few minutes past halfway through the show already, if you can believe it. And I haven't even gotten to. Uh, some of the stuff that I want to talk about, but before we before we go on, I would like for you to tell. Oh. Hello, are you still there? Hello. Uh, Hello. Are you there? Ha- can you hear Hello, me now? Hello. Yes, I'm not sure. Yes, oh. I can hear you I, now. I'm sorry, I don't okay. know why that cut out. No. You know what? I actually I accidentally hit my mute button. Okay. So, <laughs> that'll okay. do it. <laughs> yeah, that'll do it. But anyway, anyway, you know, give us give, where can we get the book and what do you have coming up uh in terms of uh some of your appearances on your own and also with Lee and Cryon? Yeah, sure. So my books are available through Lee Carroll's website. It's cryon.com, so uh K R Y O N, cryon.com, and if they go onto the the store the online store, they will be able to see that amongst Lee's books are my two latest books and they're actually offering a special combo deal as well if you buy the two books together. So um, that's that's the website to go to. But I, I will also just mention that I have my own website which is Monica Marani, so that's M-O-N-I-K-A, Marani is spelled M-U-R-A-N-Y-I. So monicamarani.com. 
And if the listeners are interested in uh, some of those things, I actually have a lot of free chapters that I couldn't fit into the books because the books had to be a, a certain limited sure. number of, of pages. So I thought to myself, well, I, I can, you know, this topic, like our interview, is going over the time limit allowed. So I already have those chapters written with question to cry on answered and they're available free from my website for people to go to and and have a look you, you know you'll either like it or you won't and that's okay uh and and in terms of appearances i will be traveling around the u.s in january with lee so i'm very excited that one of the sort of early events in january is going to be in boulder colorado and it's going to be an amazing two-day event with Greg Braden yep. and Dr. Todd Overkites. So I will definitely be there to uh, find books and answer questions for people. And there's lots of other things travel uh, scheduled for the year. And I'm very excited about being on my home home country for a amazing retreat that we're doing at Uluru in the middle of the Red Desert of Australia. So um, most of the schedules that you find on the crime website, I end up making about 80% of those meetings. Well, that's terrific. So you can go to, so folks, you can go to cryon.com. That's K-R-Y-O-N.com. And you can, you can see what the schedules are. And, you know, Lee travels uh, quite a bit. And the thing that, the thing that's really uh, interesting about, about Lee's travels, especially through the, throughout the U S is that uh, he goes to places where you wouldn't expect him to go. I mean, a lot of people will hit, you know, the major cities. They'll go to Sedona. They'll go to Mount Shasta. They'll go to Los Angeles, uh, San Diego, um, you know, New York, Minneapolis, those kinds of things. And you wouldn't expect them to go to places like uh, Madison, Wisconsin, you know, or yeah. Traverse City, Michigan. And Lee does that, and 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 I, you know, uh, I certainly hope Monica that 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 you will be at some of those appearances because, uh, um, you know, Lee Lee makes it a point to to hit some of those some of those places where most people usually will not bring their their conferences or their or their yeah. appearances. So, so folks, just go to the Cryon website or go to uh, Monica Moraney, um, dot com if. If you forget how to spell Monica's name, just shoot me an email yes. at Joe oh, at Joe and, and they can find it. They can find the link from the Cryon website when they go okay, to the Cryon team. Yeah, that that's probably the easiest way, actually. <laughs> yeah, we all, the, yeah and, we all have the front door and the back door opening on the website, so no right, problem there. Right. Okay, so I just a couple of things before we go on, and I really want to move on to the next uh, the next topics. I really want to talk about the the human Akash. Um, but before we go on, I just want to tell you that, you know, aside from the radio show, I facilitate self-empowerment, manifestation, transformation, and practical application of divinely inspired information in your life. Um, I do private sessions. You can read about the private sessions and, you know, some testimonials at my website, www.healingtheuniverse.com, so there's no sense in going through all of that stuff here. Um, I just, you know, uh, take back and own your power. Go to the website, check out the private sessions. If it resonates with you, then uh, then sign up. All the instructions are there. And I want to say that uh, this week, the first person, the first person who sends me an email uh, to Joe Rumbolo at yahoo.com, first person that sends me an email, whether whether live or listening to the archive. Uh, I will give a free 30-minute session to that first person that emails me uh, during the show live or from the archive. So it's a free 30-minute session. It's just something that um, you know that I decided that I want to do. So if you want a free 30-minute session, shoot me an email right now, Joe Rambolo at yahoo.com. Um, also, I just want to tell you what I, what's coming up here on Crystal Clear Speaks next week, Thursday, November 20th. My very special guest will be my my really good friend Kelly S. Jones, and this time, last time Kelly was discussing the Akashic Records, and this time she's going to be discussing Feng Shui. And I mean, Kelly really knows her stuff. So uh, join us next Thursday at 7 p.m. Central. That's November 20th. On December 6th, Janet Atwood will be with us right here on Crystal Clear Speaks. 
Uh, you probably all know who Janet is. And also uh, coming up beyond that, uh, uh, psychic John Holland will be here, Danny and Brinkley, Gail Thackeray, Kelly Sullivan Walden, a good friend of mine, another good friend of mine, Pergeet Harris, who also has done some work with Lee Carroll, uh, Vinnie Jenna, God, can't wait till Vinnie's on the show. He's a trip and a half. Uh, Caitlin Keat, and there's more to follow. So stay tuned. There's always a lot of great stuff happening here on Crystal Clear Speaks. I also want to remind you that if you have any questions or comments, that uh, you know we have about 20 minutes left in the show. And um, if you want to talk, if you have a question for me or or uh, or Monica, the number to call is 818. 818- Four three one eight five zero three. That's eight one eight four three one eight five zero three. Press the number one. That'll raise your hand. That will put you in the host queue, and it will tell me that um, it'll tell me that you want me to call on you and bring you uh, bring you on the air. So again, that number is eight one eight four three one eight five zero three. And I also want to mention uh, before we go on that at some time during the next two or three months. Um, I'm going to have Monica back with Lee Carroll. So Monica and Lee will both be here. So that should be quite an interesting and powerful, uh, powerful show. So, um, hey, stay tuned. We always have some great stuff happening here on Crystal Clear Speaks. Monica, are you still with us? Sure am. Still with us. Okay, great. Monica, I want to get into this human Akash. Um, What is the human Akash? What does Cryon say the human Akash is? I guess in a uh if I had to capture it into one line it's the energy of all that is. Mm-hmm. And this is where the the sayings come from the answers lie within. And that saying used to drive me crazy because what, what, <laughs> some people what, what, would what, say what was... you know the 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 phrase where the answers you seek lie within oh yeah okay. and you know it was always well it was always like a throwaway line to me because i didn't get that we have the god and divinity with inside and in that is the akash and it's just a matter of accessing that wisdom and and opening the spiritual jar so that it, the akash is the energy of all that is it's unique to each person on the planet uh and it's stored in many places. So you have the cave of creation. You have, everyone has their crystals in the cave of creation, which is uh, meta- metaphoric, but it's an actual place that exists that crime says will never be found. And if you think of the crystals in the cave and every life you have, it's like rings in a tree where it's marked of every incarnation. And that contains the Akashic energy so it's also within our multi there's our dna within our body has a multi-dimension an attribute of multi-dimensional field around it so this is where if people are fascinated by that i really recommend uh reading lee carroll's book 12 the 12 layers of dna and that will explain a lot more that i then i can go into in this short time that we have but essentially your uh, cash is every experience and lifetime and spiritual awakening and learning and experience that you have stored within that energy of all that is. Now that also includes fears and phobias as well. But the idea of all all of that energy is not so that you have a grain of sand in your shoe, but if we think of it as a gold mine, and Lee Carroll and Cryon, I believe, are the first people to coin the term mining the Akash. So what if all of your past lives is there like a gold mine ready for you to dive in and bring out all of all of those things that you want to be? And this is where I get really fascinated when I learn about Lee Carroll's story because his story was that he was an engineer, a hermit, didn't like people and wouldn't be caught dead uh, talking to, to large audiences. So it's totally a different person to who he is now as to before Cryon. So he gives a very clear example of drawing on the Akash to 
to pull out those things. I'm sure there's been uh, people listening in here that have changed habits or they've, they've managed to uh, pull, pull upon their spiritual knowledge and wisdom. Um, I'm sure there's a lot of healers out there that have a lot of their medical intuition and they can intuit what is wrong with people. So where did they get that? Um, could it be something that has carried across in their Akash? Is it possible that you also have the ability to draw on those uh, future potentials to come in? And if, and if that is the case, then wow, what a gift. What a gift we have all through free choice, asking through intent for it to be available to us. And I think I just want to quickly mention, Jory, if I can, that so many times people say, how do I do it? How do I do it? How do I do it? I think we really, if we just get back to basics, the one phrase that I really love is, dear spirit, please tell me what I need to know or show me what I need to know next. I don't know where I need to be, but I trust that I'll be guided to go there. And if we can keep ourselves very open and then pay attention to the synchronicities that come, then we move forward with a, uh, a support network because we've, we've asked, we've given the intent and we've waited for the information to come and then we can move ahead. Well, you know, I, I want to go a little, just a, for a second, I, I just want to go a little deeper into, into Lee's story. Um, you know, uh, having been a recording studio engineer and owning his own studio for 30 years and, and you know, and actually being a classically trained percussionist and um, uh, and actually recording commercials for, for, uh, for Disney, doing some film work with Disney, as, or, or re- recording commercials and also doing film work with Disney. Um, if, you, if you all remember the old uh, Rice-A-Roni commercials, those were recorded at, at Lee's Studios in, in San Diego. You know, Rice Aroni, the San Francisco treat, that those commercials and everything. So that's what that's what Lee did. And when Cryon first came to Lee Carroll, uh, you know, Cryon said, Okay, here's the deal here's the deal, Lee, and you know, and I'm I'm paraphrasing this. Here's the deal. It's like it's like uh, you're gonna channel me and in front of people, you're gonna speak in front of people, and oh by the way, you're gonna write books. And uh, Lisa, well, no, I'm not, you know, I'm, you know, kind of shy, recording studio engineer and that sort of thing. And and Karan said, yeah, but you've done this all before. You've done this all before, so all you need to do is reach into different dimensions uh, where where you've done this and just bring it forward into this consciousness. And that's the nutshell version of the story, but I will tell you folks that that really does work. And you don't even have to know what dimension you're reaching into. And this goes for anything. And as I'm speaking this, you know, I'm thinking about a half a dozen things where I actually forgot to do this. And as soon as the show's over with, I am going to do that. I'm going to reach into other dimensions and bring some stuff forward into this into this dimension. But give that a shot. And you don't even have to know what dimension it is. You just have to put out the intention or the declaration that you're reaching into another dimension to bring that particular gift forward. And I just really, really, Monica, wanted to elaborate on that because, I mean, I think that's really important, and I think that's a that's a really, really powerful tool uh, for for people to use. And, you know, I really wanted to put that out there for our listeners uh, and give them that. And, by the way, Soul Connection, um, uh, the email was correct. I did get your email, and actually I got two emails about the free 30-minute session at the same time. And... Um, one of one of them was from you, Soul Connection. I will get back with you, and we'll establish a time to do that. And the, the other the other email was from my guest for next week, Kelly S. Jones. So, uh, <laughs> Kelly, if you're, still, if, if you're if you're still listening, absolutely, absolutely, I, I'll I'll you know I'll do the thirty minutes with you with you as well. So for this week, we we have we have the free thirty minute sessions. Thank you both for responding, and uh, I will be in touch with both of you so that we can we can schedule those. So anyway, uh, I think I'm going to do that every week for a while. So if you uh, were not able to get, get your email in for that free 30-minute session this week, um, you know, join us next week, and uh, we'll, we'll just do it again. So anyway, I don't want to take up a whole lot of time with that. I've, I've probably – I get excited about this stuff, Monica, and I've probably spoken too much already. 
Um, oh, I think it's uh, fine. You already know it all. You know. So it's it's wonderful to hear the applications that you've put into your life. And this is what it's about. If, if No yeah. good at having all this spiritual knowledge and wisdom if you can't implement it into your life. And one of the other things about mining the Akash, it's uh, Lee says practice as though you already have that ability or practice. You know, and the other thing, because I did a lot of energy work with Peggy Phoenix Debro, and her one of her favourite words that she used to always tell us is to practice. And the more you practice, the better you get at something, until eventually you you are just so honed in on that skill, talent, ability, whatever it is that you want, that you really start to claim it and own it. And whether it's in your Akash or your, your future life to come, it doesn't matter. If it's what you want, use your intent. Uh, you don't have to have done it in a past life, but, but practice. And I love that saying, fake it till you make it. Mm-hmm. Right, that, that's right. Well, listen, I want to move on because there's a couple of things that I really want to hit here before we, uh, before we go. And uh, one of them has to do with karma and life lessons. Um, what is Kryon's take on karma? Okay, so karma is all your unfinished energies. It's it's about oh the, the the metaphor that he uses is your your karma is to do with drive it's a karmic energy to steer you and drive you to being what you want to do. So it's the it's the energy that makes four or five generations of policemen, for example, or four or five generations of uh, firemen. So you, you grow up with this karmic lineage and everyone in your family is doing this and you fall into that groove of doing it. And it's about the karmic family interactions that surround you. Now life lessons are something completely separate, although they can relate to the karma, but it is about your personal it's, it's more personal and it's about you with you. Uh, the ability to love. The you know what's what's the Achilles heel in your life as your life lesson? Now, one of the hardest things of life lessons is to actually identify them, and that is probably the single most hardest thing to do because you're not aware of what you're not aware of. So, how do you become aware of you know what your life lessons are? Well, if you if you constantly feel like you're having bad relationships after bad relationships after bad relationships, could that be related to your personal life lesson? And is that about is that about an abandonment issue? Or there's there's got to be something there that once you recognise it, that is the biggest aha that you can actually have. And I, I hate to say it, but because they're life lessons, they often take. Life, a lifetime to work through them, um, but spirit really loves and honors us, and is there to there to help us to get through it. So, I, yeah. So, karma is unfinished energy that drives us to doing some, something, and life lessons are personal to you and your personal challenges, and they can actually carry over into your next incarnations. So, does that explain it enough? It pretty much it pretty much explains it. I just want to ask one question: Is karma optional? Karma is uh, what's what's optional is dropping your karma. In an old energy, it was the system that was used to drive people to certain places and situations. So, what happens when you drop your karma? That's actually a question I asked to Cryon in my Human Akash book. So I don't want to get into all the details because people want to find out that, that that's probably the best place I can go because I can't remember all the answers that Cryon came in with. But basically, when you drop your karma, you're no longer in that karmic group driving you to do certain things. You are now part of the no karmic group. So you are basically here on the planet as a light worker to help others evolve and drop their karma. Mm -hmm. And that's what's really exciting. We're moving, you know, another couple of generations as people get enlightened, as people drop their karma and more of us become enlightened. This is what's going to change the planet and create an exponential difference in 
helping helping other people to to move through and create the divinity within. Okay, I, I don't I don't want to rush things, but but uh, you, we have a very just a few minutes left, and there's something that there's something that I want to uh, that I want to address here uh, rather quickly. Um, three parts of it, there's three parts of a human. There's the higher self, human consciousness, and innate. Can you very very mm-hmm. briefly explain each one of those, the three parts of a human? Sure. So, human consciousness uh, drives the evolution of the planet. Uh, it's linked to the magnetic grids and there's been actual experiments that show when compassion is very, very high on the planet, there's been a spike in the magnetic grid. So human consciousness, uh, there's, a, there's a great channel that Lee's put out from Berkeley Springs, West Virginia, called The Physics of Consciousness. I really recommend listeners to go in and, and have a look at Lee's audio file. Now that's going to give you everything you need to know about human consciousness. The higher self is that part of you that's vibrating higher. It's connected to your soul on the other side of the veil. And your innate is your body intelligence. Now, all of those three energies work together as a soup. So your innate knows everything that's going on within your body, your intelligence. And this is where muscle testing works, where kinesiologists, will connect with innate to for the body to talk and say this substance is not good or it is good and it's through our init- uh, intuition that we're going to start creating a bridge that connects human consciousness with innate and the higher self. Now this gets us back to where we started talking on the show about multidimensional state. The more we connect those bridges between innate intuition and human consciousness, the more multidimensional we become. Isn't that wonderful? That's incredible. That that really is, Monica. Um, I mean, this is, you know, this has really been this has really been fabulous uh, this evening. Um, I want to ask you one more. We we have time. For, I have time for one more one more thing. Um, Akashic communication. Um, how does one how does one get in touch with with their akash? I think it's a matter of going into a meditative stillness and become an active listener. And so this takes this is where we have to create the bridge between your intuition and innate. Because innate knows everything about you, all your past life, future life to come, and it's how do you how do you listen to intuitive thought? Everyone has different ways. Some people are clear audience. Some people get feelings and sensations. So whatever works for you, that's what you should begin with and practice it more and more. And your akash is is getting ready to communicate with you. And look, we didn't even go into details, but there's so many fast track systems that Crian has been talking about to help us connect in with our akash. It has to do with Gaia and the energy grids of Gaia and benevolent solar system changes that are happening. There's so much going on that is helping us to get in touch with our Akash. And if you also think about as more humans awaken, it creates a a collective consciousness that raises, making it easier for others to access their Akash as well. So it's, it's bigger than what we think. And everyone doing their own little bit has such a huge impact. I can't, em- I can't emphasize enough just how magnificent every single human being on the planet is. Well, Monica, we're going to continue this conversation about, uh, about the human Akash and uh, about the Gaia effect uh, in, in just a couple of months when, when, uh, when you come back on the show with Lee Carroll. That should really be a lot of fun, be interesting. Of course, Lee is a fabulous guest I've I've you know I've had Lee on the show during the past six six and a half years. I've he's been on the show many times, and we've had uh, many interesting conversations both on the air and off the air. So when Lee 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 will come back with you, and we will continue the conversation about the cryon work and how you have uh, taken the cryon work and, and really interpreted it and 
um, actually, the way you've packaged it, you've packaged this really for uh, for the mainstream, and 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 it's ready for those for those mainstream people to just sit down and and read about this cryon work in language that they can understand. So this is really a great service, uh, Monica, to the world that that you're doing. I thank you for it. I thank you for being here with us uh, tonight, all the way from Chile, where where it's, um, I guess it's about 11 p.m. in in Chile. We determined yeah, we determined right. that yeah we determined that three hour difference before the show started. So I thank you for being here live. Thank you all for being here tonight. Until next week, I ask that you laugh off. And this is called light work, folks. Don't take it so seriously. It really is only a game. So lighten up, spread the light. Remember, you are the light. Allow yourself to shine, and do not forget to breathe. You are the breath of God. Monica, do you have any parting words? I just want to really thank the listeners who have tuned in and the ones who are even listening to this in the... I speak to the ones listening now and the ones who are listening to the archive of this. What is it that has made you listen to this particular radio interview? And I think that tells me a lot about who you are. You are an old soul spreading your light on the planet. Whatever happens, I want you to just keep on plowing ahead and keep on holding on to that magnificent core that you have. You affect people in ways that you are not even aware of. Even if you don't have someone to come and say how much you've changed their lives, I know that you are changing their lives. So uh, much love and blessings to you all. Monica, thank you uh, so much for being here tonight. I really appreciate it. Until next time, folks, spread love and pack light. We can each make a difference in this world one heart at a time. Start with your own and just do it. I'll see you next week, folks, with Kelly S. Jones. We're going to be talking feng shui. 